everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to take a look at a trio of crops in wheat, barley, and oats. And the reason we are lumping all three of these crops together is because all three of these crops are capable of providing us with straw in addition to their respective grain of wheat, barley, and oat. Now for those of you who are playing with seasonal calendar enabled, Let's go ahead and see what the plant and harvest schedule looks like for the default base game seasonal calendar. We can see here that wheat is going to be planted in September and October, and then will be harvested the following year in July or August. As far as barley goes, we're going to also plant that in September and October, and then harvest it in the following year in June or July. As far as oats go, though, oats are planted in spring. They are planted in March or April and then would be harvested the same year in July or August. For the sake of this video, we are going to have the seasonal growth calendar disabled, so we will not have to worry about following through an entire year in order to get to be able to harvest our wheats or barley. But we will be taking note of how many months it's going to take from seed until ready to harvest. Now, as far as what type of equipment are you going to need in order to plant, harvest, transport both your grain and your straw? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So as far as seeding goes, you're going to use any traditional seeder in order to plant wheat, barley, or oats from the HK25 plus NS3030 all the way up to the big Amazon 15001-C. We are gonna be using this specific seeder in this video simply because it has a 15 meter working width and we'll be able to get our field planted quickly, both with wheat, barley, and oats. Now, as far as seed goes, we're gonna use the same seed that we use for most crops in Farming Simulator. We can get the big bag pallet of seed. $900 for a thousand liters, or we can get a big bag bag of seed, $800 for a thousand liters, or we can move on to a pallet of seed, which is $950 for a thousand and fifty liters. Many seeders will also allow you to fertilize. For this specific video though, we have prepared our field already, so it is fully fertilized. We will not be needing to use any fertilizer in our seeder. Now, when it comes time to harvest, we're gonna be able to use any of the traditional harvesters that you're gonna find here under the vehicles category to harvest our wheat, barley, our oats. For this specific video, we are using the Fent Ideal 10T simply because it will allow us to use a rather large header, which will allow us to harvest fairly quickly and also has a fairly large grain capacity. Now, when it comes time to selecting the proper header for your specific harvester, you're gonna to want to use the combinations button down here, and it will pull up a suggested listing of compatible headers. We're gonna be using the grain header, which are the ones with the reel here on the header. We have the power flow for the Fent, and then the Dynaflex 9255. We're gonna be using the Dynaflex 9255 for this particular video. If we go to tools and then up here to headers you're going to find all of the various grain headers that are going to work for our wheat barley and oats you're going to be able to find those icons down here and as i said they're going to correspond to all of the headers that have the intake reels on them when it comes time to transport your grain you're going to be able to use most trailers that are available in game as long as they have the appropriate wheat barley and oat icon down here in the fill types category. You see those right here, wheat, barley, and oats. Now, as we move up through the various size trailers, when we get to some of the larger trailers, they are specifically designed for the purpose of transporting forage crops as opposed to grain crops, like the Radium 255, for example, which is only set up to take grass, hay, straw, silage, wood chips, sugar cane, and chaff. For this particular video, we're going to be using the Load King Distinction Triple Hopper because this trailer actually has the capability of transporting three different grains 
at the same time because there are three different hoppers in the single trailer. Now, when it comes time to talk about the straw, there are multiple ways of collecting the straw off the field. One of those would be the use of a forage wagon. We've demonstrated the use of a forage wagon in part three of our grass care series that we recently put out. We have the Faro 4010D. This is the one that we are gonna be using today for the purpose of collecting loose straw off the field. Now, if you like to use a baler, you can also use a baler to bale straw from the Massey Ferguson 1840, which is a small baler. Or we could go to a round baler if you wish to use round bales. For the purpose of this video, we're using the New Holland Big Baler 1290 High Density in order to make square bales. Uh, when it comes time to transport your bales, you're gonna use a bale loader. Again, we demonstrated the use of this in our grass care series, so we're not necessarily going to bother with that. When it comes time to storing your straw, you can store your loose straw in a hayloft that is available here under silos. Haylofts. We're gonna demonstrate putting this, putting our loose hay, I'm sorry, our loose straw in the hayloft as well as pulling it back out. Now, as far as other uses for straw, you're gonna be using it in your animal care, specifically for cows and pigs. As far as storing your grain, you're gonna go back to silos, and you're gonna be able to store your wheat, barley, or oats in a traditional grain silo, like the Una Pharma 400 OVI 1000. And then it will move up to the various sizes all the way up to the big NL1622-16000 grain silo. So with that, let's talk about our field and how we have already prepared our field to accept our cedar. We're gonna be using Elm Creek as our demonstration map and we are here on field 33. This field has already been prepared, so it has its need plow state removed. We have limed the field. We have also fertilized the field twice and removed any stones that may be on the field. Let's go ahead and jump in our case here, get our cedar all ready. We're going to plant all three crops on this field. We're going to first plant wheat, then we're going to plant barley, and then we are going to plant some oats. Right now the cedar is set to plant wheat. Let's go ahead and hire a helper and get that process started. Uh, once we have seeded wheat, you can see that we need to come through here with a weeder and a roller in order to maximize our yield bonus so we can get plus 100% yield bonus. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut away and when we come back, we will be one month post seeding and we'll see what our crops look like at that point. We are one month after seeding and you can see our wheat, our barley and our oats have all now emerged. Let's go ahead and see how many months it takes for all of these to grow to a ready to harvest state. We are now two months past seeding. Our barley and our wheat are still in their first growth stage, but our oats have moved on to a second stage of growth. We're now three months post seeding. Our wheat and barley have gone through another growth stage as has our oats all are still growing but it does appear that our oats are significantly further ahead in their growth as opposed to the wheat and barley we are now four months post seeding and the wheat appears to be the furthest behind here we have a growth stage for barley 
And our oats actually are ready to harvest. So oats, four months from seed to harvest state. Barley is apparently one or two months behind. And then wheat, well, yeah. We'll see how long that really takes. Five months post seeding, our wheat has now gotten ahead on it. Our barley is still in the same growth stage as we were before. And of course, our oats are still ready to harvest. We're now six months post seeding. Our wheat is still growing. Our barley is ready to harvest. And of course, our oats are still hanging out waiting for the wheat to catch up. Finally, seven months after seeding, wheat is ready to harvest. Barley is still ready to harvest. And quite frankly, we could have almost harvested, seeded, and harvested oats again in the same time that it took for wheat to grow. So, seems pretty evident. If you are desperate for straw, oats will get you straw the fastest when growing without seasonal growth. So let's go ahead and talk about a really interesting feature that I don't think a lot of people know about with respect to wheat, barley, and oats. And what happens if you mow the crop. So this works if you have the crop ready to harvest. Okay, you cannot mow wheat, barley, or oats until they are in a ready to harvest state. And when you do that, you can mow them and you actually get straw as the output from the mower. So I want to go ahead and demonstrate that in a recent live stream that I did. I put up a poll and out of over 200 respondents to that poll, two thirds of those respondents did not realize that you could mow wheat, barley, or oats and you would get straw as a result. So that was our wheat. Now we are mowing our barley and now we are mowing our oats. So you might ask yourself, why would I want to grow wheat, barley, or oats just for the sole purpose of then mowing the crop and getting straw. Well, let's say you are a cow farmer. You have cows. That is all you have. You have no need for the grain. Wheat, barley, or oats as a grain crop are useless to you. You have no purpose in needing to own a harvester that would harvest a grain crop. But you do have a need for straw. So your options are either one, buy straw, or two, grow wheat, barley, or oats, and then mow it for the explicit purpose of then collecting it for straw. So let's go ahead and talk about the process of harvesting our grain. If you've seen any of the other how-to videos around a grain crop, for example, soybeans or canola, you know that we're gonna use our grain header and we're gonna use our harvester. Now, unlike those other crops, straw is an output that you can have with wheat, barley, or oats. And that's what we're doing right now. We are outputting a straw windrow 
from our wheat field. Now, if you don't have a need for straw, if you don't have the equipment in order to gather the straw, you can turn that off with the comma key. And now we're going to be spreading the straw swath just like that onto the ground. So you can have it either way. You can have either straw accumulate into a windrow or you can just scatter it on the ground like this. I'm going to go ahead and hit a straw windrow back. As you can see, there's no inherent benefit in the base game to just scattering the straw onto the ground. It does not give us an extra fertilization layer. It doesn't hinder the regrowth of weeds in any way but if you do not have the ability to gather straw then really there's no need to have a straw windrow be dropped now we've already demonstrated that you can collect a straw windrow with a forage wagon what i want to do now is just quickly demonstrate that if you wanted to, you could bale straw also. Now we went into significantly more detail about balers in part four of our grass care series. Or was it part three? No, it was a part four, I believe. So I encourage you to go check that out if you're interested in more details about the specific balers. Here, I just wanted to demonstrate that we can indeed collect our straw windrow and we are producing bales with that straw windrow. All three of these crops will produce straw. So I don't think we need to necessarily demonstrate baling barley straw as opposed to wheat straw as opposed to oat straw. Anyone that's watched my videos knows that I'm not necessarily 100% focused on yield output, which crop provides the most yield. That is not my intention in these videos. My intention in these videos is to show you the process and explain to you the process. But it is my belief that all three of these crops produce the same amount of straw output. So I do not believe that wheat, barley, or oats provide more straw than any of the other wheat, barley, or oat crop. There you go. So now we have made a bale. We can drop the bale off. Just like that. And we have ourselves a bale of straw. Now, as we have also demonstrated in some previous videos, you can use the Bergman auger wagon to collect your grain out of the harvester and then transport your grain from field to truck or trailer. The purpose of using an auger wagon and a tractor as opposed to driving a truck through the field is ultimately to consider rutting up the field with the narrower truck tires or the potential of getting your vehicle stuck in the field because in theory the ground on the field is much softer than that on the road or outside of the field's boundaries. And we're going to use the O key to pipe out on our auger wagon. And as I said in the intro, we're using this particular trailer because it has the capability of storing three distinct crops. Put wheat in the front hopper. We're going to put our barley in the middle hopper and our oats in the rear hopper. Now, after your crop is harvested, you're going to come through here as you would with other crops and use a mulcher to mulch the stubble, work it into the soil, or at least put it on top of the soil 
so that then when you do your other field work, like cultivation or plowing, if it is required, then you can incorporate that plant matter and you will get an additional yield bonus as a result. With respect to straw, you can store your straw in a hayloft, as I mentioned in the intro. That is right here, we have a hayloft placed. We'll drop the straw off here at the side. The straw is then used, the blower is then used to put straw in the top of the hayloft. And then we're going to extract our straw out from the middle. Straw serves a couple of different purposes. One, you can use straw in your cow or pig pastures to act as bedding, so then you can get manure. Or you could also sell the straw. We go to our prices screen. We're going to come down here to straw. You can see that we can sell it either at the animal dealer or the South Valley Biomass Energy Facility here on Elm Creek. With respect to our harvested grain, we can sell the grain at respective sell points, or if we are looking to store the grain, we can obviously store it in our silo, just like the one we have placed right here. As you can see, I have wheat, barley, and oats all in this single trailer. While we are unloading our grain, let's go ahead and also look at our sell points for these three particular crops. So for our wheat, we have several different sell points. We have a feed and grain south, Goldcrest Valley. We have a pair of grain mills. One of those has been placed right here for this video and Johnson's Farmer's Market. Barley, we have feed and grain south, Goldcrest Valley, a grain mill and Johnson's Farmer's Market also. And then oats, we have the cereal factory, feed and grain, Goldcrest Valley, grain mill and Johnson's Farmer's Market. Now, as you may have noticed, oats actually has two production facilities where we can make use of our oats. And that is here at the grain mill or at the cereal factory. So let's just take a quick look at our production and we'll take a look here at our grain mill first. So grain mill will accept wheat, barley, oats, or sorghum. We've already done another video on sorghum, so you can go check that out if you're interested in how to harvest, plant, and use sorghum. But at any rate, our wheat, 3,600 cycles per month, and it's gonna produce four units of flour. So we're gonna be able to produce 14,400 units of wheat per month from our grain mill. Barley, on the other hand, has only 600 cycles per month and will produce 23 units of flour. So barley will produce 13,800 units of flour per month. So less flour than wheat. But don't get all excited yet. Oats, on the other hand, 1,200 cycles per month, 19 units of flour. Oats has the capability of producing 22,800 units of flour. So oats are the clear victor as far as total amount of flour produced per month. The downside is oats will typically yield less than wheat or barley. And we can validate that by looking at our prices because typically oats are going to sell at a higher price, but it also means that oats are going to have a lower overall yield per hectare or acre than wheat or barley. Other production is the cereal factory. Oats are gonna be used for the production of cereal. Now let's take a look at the various production 
revenue that we can get for selling further refined wheat, barley, or oats here at the grain mill, we obviously produce flour. Right now, our best price for flour is $1,890, whereas our worst price for flour is $1,659. If we compare that to the best price we have today for our wheat, it's a pretty good uptick in income because our price for wheat ranges from just over $1,000 per 1,000 liters to $1,300 per 1,000 liters. Barley, again, it does seem to make sense to process our barley into flour because our barley prices right now are anywhere between $877 and $1,040 for the best price of our barley. Oats, on the other hand, while we do get the best flour production for our oats, right now, oats are paying out pretty darn good. In fact, they're paying out almost equivalent to what the oat flour would be paying out. So processing oats into oat flour may or may not be in your best interest. Let's go back and take a look at our oat production. We are inputting 15 units of oats and we're outputting 19 units of flour. We are getting more flour out than the oats we're putting in, but are we getting enough flour out to really make it worth our while as opposed to selling those oats directly? I'll leave that up to you all to decide how you all want to progress through your gameplay. Now, if we look at cereal, cereal pays out really good. Almost 8,000 right now per thousand liters of cereal. If we look at our cereal production though, cereal requires a fair bit of inputs. We have to have a resource for honey. We have to have a resource for raisins. And we also have to have a resource for corn in addition to the oats that we are growing. And if we have all four of those inputs, then we can indeed make cereal and get a pretty good bit of profit out of that. But again, is it going to be worth your while to have honey production, raisin production, and corn production on top of your oat production in order to get to cereal? I'll leave that up to you all to decide that as well. So guys, I hope this video was useful and helpful in some regard. What we learned here is how to seed wheat, barley, and oats, the growth time frame for all three of those crops, and the fact that oats will basically grow much faster than barley or wheat. What we can do with not only the grain, but also the straw that may come off the field as a result of our crop harvest. And then if we do not want the grain at all, we learned that we can mow ready to harvest wheat, barley, or oats, and then get straw as an output, which then we can use for bedding in our cows or pigs, or we could just sell it, whatever we should so wish. And until next time, happy farming.